If you want to know how to build really powerful AI applications in the simplest way possible, you have come to the right place. Today, I'm going to show you how to build powerful AI applications with AI agents made very simple with Langchain. Langchain is a really powerful Python library, which basically just gives you a suite of tools that lays the groundwork for you to build really powerful AI applications without having to worry about developing a lot of different things that go into AI, like chat memory or output parsers or dynamic prompts, all these things, it provides to you as a suite of tools so you can get on the ground running, building the application of your dreams without having to put in months and months of work getting things set up initially. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the project, the AI agent that I developed in the last masterclass video, and augment it, turn it into something using Langchain and show how simple and powerful it is. And there's even a bonus at the end where I can show how you can make something like this into a multi model agent that can actually use different models like Claude and GPT. So without further ado, let's dive right into the code. All right, so here we have the exact code that we worked on to create an AI agent in the last masterclass video. My goal for this masterclass is really to have each video build on each other. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take the exact code we had before, and I'm gonna show you exactly what to change to turn the AI agent into a Langchain agent instead of just using the GPT SDK like we did before. So it's still gonna use GPT under the hood, um, aside from being able to use Claude with the bonus that I have at the end of the video. Uh, but it's going to be leveraging a lot of stuff that Langchain provides us to make things simpler. So the first thing to mention before we dive into the changes to make this work as a Langchain agent is I just want to mention that I've changed up the example environment variable file a little bit. And so if you're following along, you're going to want to uh, go back to this, pull my code again from GitHub and change these up. Uh, I got good documentation, so you know exactly what to set here. And then also the requirements file has changed. There's new Python packages because we are using Langchain. And so that's actually the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to import all the new tools that we need from Langchain here. You can see there's a lot of things here. Um, we have the tools, we have the chat open AI object, and we also have new ways to represent the messages that are going to make things look a little bit simpler. So now going down to our main function here, instead of saying that we want um, the system message in this JSON format, we can actually say it is a system message. And so this is using a Langchain tool already to make things nice and simple. And we'll actually do the same thing here, where instead of this being JSON for a user message, it is now a human message. And then we can change the way that we handle the AI responses as well. So we're already making things look nice and simple with Langchain, which is super neat. Uh, so note here that the, the response from the AI now is not just text anymore. It's also an object which has content. This is now the text that we want to print out of the terminal. So it's a little bit of a difference there because of the way that we build up the chat history now. It's going to be with these human messages, system messages, and AI messages from Langchain. Um, so the next thing that we want to do, and this is where we really, really get to simplify things. We are going to add a decorator to this function. And it's very simple. It's just at tool. And that's using this right here from Langchain. And what this is telling Langchain, it's going to tell our agent in a second here, is that this function is a tool that it can invoke. And it's actually going to tell the AI agent to look at the doc string to know when to use this tool and what arguments to give the function. You can see because we define the arguments here and things like the date format for the due date. And so because we are using the doc string now to tell AI when to use this function, we don't need this messy object anymore like we did when we just used the GPT SDK. This messy object that told us the description of the function, the name of the function, the parameters and everything. But now we don't need that anymore because we can get it just from the doc string and then the function definition. And so I'm actually going to completely get rid of this function. We don't need it anymore. And this is the thing that simplifies the code the most and is really neat, especially because imagine if you have multiple different tools, you have to have that messy object for every single one of them. It just makes your code bloated. And so you can actually leverage this setup instead, which is nice because everything here you'd have anyway, because you want to have doc strings in your Python code for good documentation anyway. And so now to actually use that, instead of using the GPT SDK like this to get a response from the AI, we're going to do it a little bit simpler. And so now we're going to create an instance of that chat open AI object from Langchain. Remember, this is using the open AI API key environment variable to actually authenticate with open AI. So it needs to be named exactly this way. 
And then what we're doing, just like before, is creating a list of tools where in this case, we only have one tool, create Asana task. And so it's an array where this is the only element of the array. And then what we do to actually put the tools in the AI model is we call the bind tools function on our Asana chatbot and give it the list of tools, which again, is just one in this case. And now to actually get the response from the AI, instead of using the GPT SDK, we invoke this Asana chatbot with tools object that we have, which is our large language model augmented with the tools in a very simple way. And then to tell if we have any tool calls, this is a little bit different as well. We just check to see if the tool call array actually has an element in it or not. And if we do have tool calls, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before, where AI is going to tell us basically, I want to invoke this function, here are the parameters that I want to use. And so a lot of the structure is going to look the same, but it's still going to be much, much simpler, especially because at this point, we've bound the tools without having to have, again, that messy object, we can now just use this create Asana task with a doc string, and it knows exactly when to use this function. And so let's see what we do next. So the next thing that we do, I'll go back to the, the original code, is we just change the way that we add on to our chat history. And so now we're just gonna take the AI response and dump that into the message. And this is gonna have the content as well as any tools that it wanted to call. And then what we're gonna do, just like before, is we're gonna loop through every single tool, tool call, I should say, because we haven't actually used the tool yet. And we're going to extract the name of the tool just like before. And then we're going to map the tool name to the actual function using this uh, dictionary mapping that we had before as well. And then we're going to invoke the tool with the arguments that the large language model said it wanted to use to invoke that tool. And then what we do to actually append the message instead of having to create this custom object here, we can just append a tool message, again, from Langchain with the output and then the ID of the tool that we called. Nice and simple. And then again, to invoke with the response, now that the AI actually, or now that we actually called the function for the AI, we need to give it the response so it can then create the response for the human. And so again, we're going to just invoke our Asana chatbot with tools with the latest message history, which now includes the result of the tool calls, and then return that to the user. And so at this point, that is everything that we had to do. But you can see that this is much, much simpler than what we had before. And this is just getting started with Langchain. This is a super simple example of how Langchain just does so much for you under the hood. It is a beautiful thing. So let's go ahead and let's test this out. All right, so here we are back in the terminal and it is time to run our AI agent and see if everything works well. So Python langchain-agent.py, I renamed the file from the last masterclass video, and it's gonna look the exact same where it just allows us to input anything to chat with the AI. So I can say, hey, how are you doing? And at this point, it probably should not create an Asana task for me. So let's make sure that works. Looks good. How can I assist you today? I'll say, I need to uh, bake some cookies by Sunday. Let's we'll see if it creates a task for us here. Everything should work just as it did before. The actual functionality should not be different, but everything is simpler in the code. And sure enough, I've added the task of bake cookies for you. It's due by Sunday, June 30th, which is perfect. So let me go over to Asana here. And sure enough, you can see that bake cookies due date Sunday looks good. All right. So everything is simplified and works exactly the same. So now we can do the little bonus part, which is actually to make this work with Claude as well. And so I'm going to make it possible to use different AI models and Langchain is what makes this possible without very many lines of code. And so I'll show you how to do that. And we'll actually test with Claude as well. So we're taking a quick detour here before I show how we can add in Claude to the agent, because I want to just show how powerful this really is using lane chain for this. I don't think I describe it well enough in the following section of the video. So the biggest reason that lane chain is amazing for what I'm about to show you is that different AI models actually have a different way of doing tool calling. And so this is actually called out in the very top of the documentation for tool calling in lane chain for Anthropic. It returns tool calls in this way. So, I mean, it looks nice, but it's a very specific format. And then OpenAI also has their own format. These are not the same. So if we were still just using the GPT SDK instead of Langchain, and I were to bring in the Anthropic SDK for Claude, I can't just combine those together in a couple of lines of code to have you be able to use either for function calling 
it would actually take a good amount of work because I'd have to handle these different formats for the tool calls. But with Langchain, you don't. And that is what you're about to see. And that is just one of the many super powerful things with Langchain. I'm going over this now because it is the groundwork for AI agents going forward with all the videos in my master class. I wanted to initially show what it looked like to use a GPT SDK. And now we can see how we can build on top of it with Langchain. And so that's why I'm doing that. But we're going to be using Langchain in every single video going forward. So yeah, I just wanted to call this out. Super, super powerful stuff. But anyway, let's get into adding in Claude. All right, this will not take long because it is amazing how simple this is. Let me show you how to make this so you can use both GPT and Claude for this agent, depending on your choice. So the first thing that we need to do is simply import chat anthropic from Langchain. So it's going to be a similar kind of chat object like we have with chat open AI. So now that we have that imported, let me just show you this. This is just so cool. So I'm just going to change this line to this. Boom, that is it. So I'm going to say if our model that we have defined as the environment variable has GPT in it, then we're going to use chat open AI. Otherwise, we're going to use chat anthropic. And so let me just save this here and just show that like this is what I'm referring to right here. So we can call it GPT 4.0 to use open AI or if we want to use anthropic, we can use Claude 3.5, whatever Claude model we might want to use. This is the most powerful one. And that is literally all it takes. And so now what I'm going to do Behind the scenes, I'm going to switch the environment variable, and then I'll show you my terminal, and we can test it out with Claude. All right, so here we are in our terminal again, running our AI agent, but this time powered by Claude 3.5 Sonnet. All right, so I'm going to test this the exact same way as I did with GPT. So I'll just ask it something very simple, like, uh, how far is the Earth from the sun? Just to get some sort of response from the AI where it doesn't actually need to invoke the create Asana task. All right, we got a solid answer from it. And now I'll say something very, very different. I'll just say, I need to mow the lawn by tomorrow. All right, and let's see if Claude will make a task for us in Asana just like GPT. And sure enough, there it is. It's even a very similar response, which is pretty cool. I've actually noticed that Claude and GPT will give different responses sometimes with this kind of task creation as I was, you know, testing things as I made this video. So that's an interesting thing. Like you can always try different models if you need a different kind of response. But anyway, let's go in Asana and actually test this out. Sure enough, there's a task. Mow the lawn by tomorrow. All right, there we go. Nice and simple. And so you can see here that the functionality remained the same. But this code is so much simpler now. And we're able to switch between models with a heartbeat if I want to use GPT or Claude. Really powerful stuff. The ability to uh, have these tools defined so simply with Langchain and being able to switch between models. I'm going to be using that a lot in this masterclass going forward as we start to create more complex AI agents, especially applications that have agents working together as we get into some really exciting things with other tools like LangGraph. So if you are looking forward to that, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. Stay tuned. We're going to be going through this adventure together, building some amazing things. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next masterclass video.